Okay, dear Dhamma friends, we have come to the last question and answer session in this uh, Kalal Goda English Medium Retreat. So we have received a couple of uh, written questions. We will start the session with written questions. Answer Swami answer. There are three questions, uh, one in singular and two in English. Uh, about uh, the practice, the first question about practice. Avasarai Pinwat Swami Nuhansa Kaleka Sita Kisiva Upadana Nukata Sita Nidahase Pavatwanata Shunyata Viharane Siti Mata Puhunu Annekme Danimata Danima Mata Sihia Tabamin Situ Livalin Midi Me Mohote Sita Me Mohote Sita Pavati Mat Kamatahan Karagena Atemi Karunavin Upadesha Klaba Dena Sekwa Antima Vaki Jutta Kaikan, Situ Vidivala Danima Mata Sihia Tabamin Situ Vala Vilin Midi Me Mohote Sita Pavati Ma Kamatahana Karagena Atemi Karunavin Upadesha Klaba Dena Sekwa Lauki लाओकी के लोके सातुतुवन देवाल गैने लेबुनात लाओकी के लोके सातुतुवन देवाल गैने लेबुनात तकाई नो लेबुनात तकाई मार्ट में सिटी नवा में में मार्गे निवर्दित नेती नाम वायसटे ऐमनिसा सिद्वान नाद कारुनाविन पहेदिली कर देने नाम मैंने भी थेरुआन सारनाई अरे वायसटे की लत Nah, metana hebat ya. Paraji itu bawa ke hema barang ni mak, nah mata nang hitin ni. Api ini kena dengan pasana wakar nawa kila. Kalan naya orang dia kau hebat dengan orang orang dia keragam nawa kila. Hema itu ngara. Hema paraji itu bawa ke hengi mak kena wad kila. Hema kaya na tamari. Hebat itu ngara me. Anwasya dewal, anitta ya dewal. Orang tenggeli kahana katih adu bela. Tamang weta pemini dia akar naga tiak. Hema itu yang nubulwa. Di muka kelar dapat tien ni me, anu ke dewan lo tenggeli kahana kat ini ni. Adal data, atau dano adal nanti data atau dano. Ini ni sa, pasan awa dan awa dan, oye pet diunu ena diunu ena, thaman tada lo thaman te enati ke vitrai baragan ni. Nanti ang itu thaman ke ada balag ni no. Di pet te diunu evi. Itu kor ni kang samahan te connect, ni kan bahirim pen ni deng me manusia me, madi amak keran ni, ni kang oye me me pet te kula in no. Kira lagi hengi mak pahalu ni pulu aku dah. Ani tanya gaya deh, ting hemat isse mani dewa lalat tanggili kahana wa. Ani kang me, ehem perasaan ni tiye ni ting ara. Ee, ee sebahawa ya inggalah. Taman tikak tan tanie minno akin tu ada padu ini negatif ikat heran no nang gitu tiye no. Eke beradak nih. Mudah ee kamera tamai ting ayatna mampi deng. Ado udah kata agar udah unat ikan agar nanti ni ek. Muka deh hitat kahmat tiye no ehem mungkin padu in. Mungkin dengan itu, I think, emas di sini mana dewa lalu tenggiri agak ha, evm pida orang lak pemin, eh min naga tiye tulah tiye na pida kari sebahawa, amam mati erongga lagi na, eh hara ha, I think, vivek itu barang vimak nang wenne pulua, ikhik waradak, nahe kira tanya mat nang hiten ni, abe itu ni ada hasen nahe me, thamang weta pemini dek atahari nong hilah, ikan weta weta pemini wagakim, abihoge, barang nogan nawa kira dekut nai. Mudah bihoga hara ha, yang mana pulau ang sakitnya, ikut selat awe, me dem mea baru agarno. Tapi istirahat ang samaan ta bihoga kawa ham, ikim panel ya no, mukti taman ta tam viswasan eh. Tamangge ne taman ta tam viswasan eh, tamangge pratipada awe ne taman ta viswasan eh, tamangge ikut selat awe ange ne taman ta viswasan eh. Baik dengge he mana he, dengge bihoga kawa ham, anitta itu ada, ik daran ne pulau ang katia, kohing hari dala me. Yang mana pulau anggati ak, taman ni abih oge jaya. Yang mana pulau anggati ak, kei visa sehat gur negi lah tino. Tini sa, anu masih dewal lor datu dana. Yang netnya, be tamang meter pemini abih oge me nusalat hari netnya. Ko hamari ege istegaran anggati ego tino. Tini sa, eva ge thatya tamai me matna hiten ni apitah kian neven ni. Ini sa sampunem paraji tengi mak kila ego tekat beradi. Ini sa, eva ge me tamang meter pemini pemini abih oge petekar dana wa ek muna dene hek kila ego tekat beradi. Family abih hoga yang jaga nanti puluang, ekat dua mana akan nak kusalat awet tieno, edit terap bawat tieno. Hebe anungke dewa lata tadah ni anet ne. Nanti ngonno lagi petak tama yustar keran ni. Next question, dear Bante, 
according to my understanding, Buddha has prescribed clear path to attain Nibbana under Pancha Baladharma, Sadda, Viriya, Sati, Samadhi, Pragna, and also under Trisiksha, Sila, Samadhi, Pragna. Accordingly, is it advisable to practice Vidarshana Bhavana to achieve wisdom, within brackets, Pragna, before gaining certain status of Samadhi in processing Samatha Bhavana? Teruan Saranai. Yeah, I mean, different approaches are there, not just single approach. So, uh, Samatha Pubhanga Vipassana is what actually highlighted here, expected here. Say so you need to develop certain amount of uh, samatha and with that you are trying to develop vipassana so that is samatha oriented or samatha um, as a prerequisite and then go into vipassana. The other approach is vipassana pubbangama samatha. One can start with vipassana, one can try to uh, observe various phenomena. With that also one gains certain amount of uh, concentration and then uh, one can develop samatha also further if one needs. The other one is taking both in parallel, uh, what you call as Yuganadda, Yuganadda Bhavana, where you are developing Samatha as well as Vipassana very much in parallel. So these three methods are quite commonly used. Uh, so it is not just one method. And on the other hand, I mean, if you consider typical uh, uh, even Satipatthana practice, Anapana Sati, so you can't say that at the very early stages that you are doing Vipassana. Say you are simply trying to be mindful about your breath. So you can't say that is uh, really vipassana. So it's still we are developing certain amount of uh, samatha, we can say. Because still mind is wandering, distracted, distractions. So it's a matter of again and again bringing your attention back to the breath. So this is not vipassana, we can't say like that. So it's simply developing certain amount of uh, samatha uh, by using uh, some sort of a primary object, some sort of an object which is available, freely available and we are using it uh, to concentrate. So mind is getting distracted again and again, you are bringing it back and putting it onto the breath. So in a way here it is actually, we can say, Samatha. That is where Buddha starts, so Sato Vasa Sati, Sato Pasa Sati. And sometimes we uh, underestimate this because uh, there are many other steps are there, so we underestimate this sato vasa sati, sato pasa sati. Because for a beginner, this itself is difficult. So beginner's mind, I mean, uh, in, the, in the early stages, it is so vulnerable and filled with so many defilements, hindrances. So this itself takes long time. And uh, constantly it is getting distracted. So it's a kind of a struggle to bring it back to the breath and uh, once it is successful, then we can say, okay, now mind is fairly established in mindfulness. Continuously, okay, now I can uh, look at the breath, say 200 breaths, I can keep continuously. So that indicates fair amount of concentration. Now we are getting to the next step. Buddha asks us to look at the breath more closely, trying to understand various characteristics, where, whether the breath is longer, shorter, uh, the beginning, the middle, the end. Now this is where we are going deeper, penetrating the breath, understanding various aspects of the breath. So this we can say as a, we are planting the seeds of vipassana. Still we can't say it is real vipassana, rather we are trying to recognize different aspects of the breath. So certain necessary qualities required for vipassana, now we started to develop. Say looking something very closely keeping our attention carefully on a particular object. Uh, so likewise, uh, certain aspects necessary to develop vipassana is now we started to develop. We can call it as clear comprehension, sampajanya. And once we reach to another state where we are able to recognize the beginning of the breath, middle of the breath, end of the breath, and even sometimes we can recognize there's a little gap Beginning of the out breath, middle of the out breath, end of the out breath, there is a little gap. Next breath, beginning, middle, end. So likewise, now we are very closely paying our attention onto the breath. Now, now things can change. Now even one can observe, it is not a single breath or single in breath. It is a kind of a 
say, um, group of breaths or group of uh, incidents, group of uh, uh, what you call as uh, group of feelings or group of uh, sensations. So like as indifferently one can interpret and then probably one, one can't even distinguish whether this is in-breath or out-breath. So everything has become uh, just phenomena. And even one can observe uh, whether it is uh, cool uh, or whether it is warm, uh, slight kind of uh, movements. So, I mean, I mean, previously we observed it as in-breath and out-breath. Those are only in the conventional level. But later one may observe it as something more, uh, more primary, more fundamental. Those are nothing but uh, heat or uh, coolness or movements or sensations or touching sensations, so likewise. Now we are more into the vipassana. We can say vipassana is a broad range. So here we are now trying to recognize element characteristics of the breathing process. And then probably we go move, move forward. There we can understand, okay, these element characteristics are there and uh, these are also changing. Different characteristics are there. But they have some common features like rising and passing away, changing, uh, etc., etc. So now we can fairly say, okay, now we are going to different layer, levels of vipassana. So even therefore in the vipassana practice, so satipatthana practice, in general we consider satipatthana practice as vipassana. Uh, but the early, earlier stages of uh, satipatthana, we can say still we are developing the necessary qualities in order to develop vipassana. Yeah. Next question. Oh. Avasarai Swami Mahansa. Someone who is experiencing shunyata state, as Bhante explained in the morning Dhamma discussion, sometimes can lead to arupa state, jhana. And in case if that person dies at that moment, can be born in the arupa loka. What happens to such person? The aim was to realize Nibbana, but if you get landed in Arupa Loka, will that person be able to practice along the lines he, he or she had been practicing and achieve the expected goal Nirvana without going down to a lower realm? Yeah. So interesting question. I mean, you are quite thoughtful and uh, very interesting. <laughs> So actually this is being discussed in uh, one sutta called Ananja Sappaya Sutta, separately discussed. So interesting point is that we get attached to that. So that is where we go wrong. Uh, it is not the Arupa Jahana itself has an issue, but rather if we attach to that state, uh, if we start to cling to that, grasp to that, then that is the issue. So in uh, Ananja Sappaya Sutta, Buddha explains stage by stage one may achieve different levels of concentrations and uh, and even to the level of uh, I think Akin Chanyayatan or something. Very high level of Arupa Jahana. But his uh, uh, he, he has some Vipassana approach as well and then Venerable Ananda asked the question from Buddha Bhante now he has achieved uh, Arupa Jahana he reached this stage has fair amount of vipassana, will he attain Nibbana? What was the answer? And Buddha, Buddha give a kind of a vague answer, not a definite answer. So Buddha says some, some attain Nibbana, some not. <laughs> so then Anand, when Ananda asks, one day, I mean, all this far, this yogi has come, why not he attain Nibbana? Then the answer is there. Then Buddha mentioned that some people, some yogis, even attach to this very subtle state of concentration. And so, he will be reborn in the Arupa realm as you mentioned. But on the other hand, another person, he doesn't uh, attach to this state, rather using, its, using that state as a mechanism, as a base to recognize defilement. So, his, his approach is different. He is not just meditating just to dwell in that uh, uh, concentrated state and just attach to that and just uh, being obsessed with that kind of a situation. Rather, 
he is using as a method or as a mechanism to recognize various defilements. So in other terms, in other way what we can explain is, so he is not grasping that arupa state. He, he can be there but he is not interested in dwelling there for a long, long time. Like someone in the morning mentioned that uh, previously uh, she explained, she experienced something like in a air conditioner while being in an air conditioner but now no air conditioner. That means, I mean, the hot and cold and all these things you are experiencing, right? So it is not that blissful. Previously there is a kind of a blissful, very heightened concentration, but now it is gone. Now people might uh, misunderstand, thinking now I have gone through a downfall. I was experiencing very high, uh, say, concentrated blissful state, but now I have lost it. So that is what, I mean, from the surface, that is how we interpret it. But on the other hand, if you went through the process properly, so while being in a very heightened, deep, concentrated state, you didn't have defilements and you didn't have any grasping. If you went through the process properly, now you are in a surface, in this very shallow level of concentration. At the same time, you don't have any grasping and you don't have any defilements. So you have to recognize or you have to assess the progress based on the defilements in that sense. While being in a very concentrated level, you didn't have defilements. Now while being in a very shallow level, still you don't have defilements. So then we can say, okay, concentration is something, something, I mean, it's a, it's a tool. So you don't need that tool now. The purpose of that tool is done. So this is mentioned in certain suttas, uh, like uh, Pansu Dovaka Sutta, so Buddha mentioned uh, different levels of defilements. So gross level of defilements is nothing but the behavioral level defilements. Say you have, uh, you are doing uh, something wrong through the body, something wrong through the say speech and some gross level of uh, attachments and ill will. Kaya ducharita, vachi ducharita, mano ducharita. So the gross, gross level of purification is that you are avoiding these uh, gross defilements. Now you are into Kaya Sucharita, Vak Sucharita and Mano Sucharita. And then one encounter uh, another level, that is where uh, internally mind has hindrances. So you can use Samadhi, Samatha meditation to overcome those hindrances and now you don't have uh, the wrong thoughts, wrong thinking. Say, uh, Kama vitakka, vyapada vitakka, vihinsa vitakka, those wrong or de- uh, harmful thoughts are not present. So that is the second level. Majjima sahagata upakkilesa. So that is now removed. <coughs> and uh, then you still have subtle defilements. So you are thinking about the country, thinking about the children, thinking about the relatives, thinking about the um, say laba sakkara, gain and fame those kinds of things and thinking about the health. So those are appear like valid, appear like uh, right, correct, but they can lead to other gross levels of defilement. So even in the meditation, so you have to overcome these kinds of thoughts, so you have to come to a very silent mind. So those are the subtle defilements Buddha mentioned. Sukuma Sahagata Upakkilesa. And once you reach there, in order to reach that, you are using fair amount of Dhamma. So you have some Dhamma knowledge, you are listening to Dhamma, reading books. So you are using fair amount of Dhamma to overcome all those different defilements. Now what happened? Mind is calm, but time to time Dhamma Vitakka is coming. Dhamma Vitakka Vasis Santi. Buddha mentioned the Dhamma is used as a kind of a medicine, but the concentration gain at this time, at this level, still you have to maintain with effort. Otherwise certain Dhamma related thoughts are coming, popping up in the mind. So therefore this concentration itself is not the perfect concentration. You are maintaining it with effort. And another level is there, now you are maintaining that mind for a long time so that mind become with less defilements and you don't need even now Dhamma to maintain it. 
very much like a medicine. So with the power of medicine, you are maintaining some health. But once you stop medicine, again the health deteriorates. But the real health means that even without uh, medicine, you are able to maintain health, isn't it? So that is where Buddha mentioned, okay, there is a stage due to practice. So you are coming to a stage now even Dhamma Vitakkas are not there. Thoughts related to the, even the Dhamma is not there, but mind is clear, mind is clean, mind is with uh, concentration. So likewise, progressive stages are explained. So in our situation also, what we if we come back to the topic, so sunyata, animitta, panhita, all these different stages we experience with a lot of effort, with a lot of practice, with high concentration at the beginning. And as you develop it, you are coming even to deeper concentrations. And later, and it is being registered in the mind, so you are requested or you are instructed, now quickly jump to that, rather than going through the whole process. Now how about just putting your mind there, but can't uh, spend long time there, because you didn't go through the whole process, the necessary wisdom is not there, so that quickly the concentration uh, breaks. So that is where we are able to understand, okay, these thoughts are still disturbing me. Thoughts related to the past, thoughts related to the future, thoughts related to children or country or whatever it is. So they are again and again coming to the mind and disturbing the mind. So you are able to recognize them very clearly because mind is used to be in a very subtle, uh, undefiled, very clean, clear, spacious environment. So that is sunyata. So you have been there with respect to that state. Now there is a thought. Now there is a feeling. Now there is an agitation. So that agitation can be easily recognized. So now you are removing that agitation. You are removing that defilement. Removing that thought. Not encouraging thinking. At the surface level. Not at the deep concentrated level. But at the surface shallow level. So likewise... The, I mean, allowing, allowing the concentration to break, recognizing the cause, the thought, hindrance, whatever it is, and letting it go, removing it. Now slowly, as one may do it for a long time, then one may get a chance or ability, maintaining a non-grasping mind even at shallow, shallow concentration. Now you don't need to do much. So very much like you are not meditating. I think Udayani mentioned that, no? Last time when you were there in the uh, Poya Day. Poya, Poya Day, no? Yes, yeah. So it's very much like, I mean, coming back to the early stages. <laughs> like no meditating, not meditating. <laughs> what has happened now? Is my, med- is my concentration gone? Or is mindfulness not there? Again and again we need to question. Now we are in a vulnerable situation, by the way. Because uh, we are not stopping ourselves through force. If there are defilements, I mean, if there are, rather than defilements, anusaya, if there are asava, taints, uh, influxes are there, they are operating, immediately we will vulnerably go and grasp. Because we are not protecting the mind as before. Through a concentration we are not protecting the mind, but we are allowing it to freely move. So the very moment, uh, uh, say, suppose there is a uh, person who is uh, not, uh, not uh, like to me, someone I, I hate, if such person is there, so immediately there could be a resistance arise in the mind. Kind of a dislike arise in the mind. Now what we need to do? Is it good or is it bad? How about just being in the concentration and uh, because of the concentration not having such anger? Which, which scenario do you select? <laughs> eh? I mean, allowing it to come, I mean, then only you can recognize. Now we are going through a different process actually. It is not the samadhi sikha. It is not suppressing the defilements. Rather recognizing defilements. 
dealing with defilements, being, I mean, confronting defilements. So that is where we know, okay, still the tendency is operating in me. Still the tendencies are there, latent tendencies are there, still I have lust. Rather than telling I, okay, still this mind has lust. Still this mind has anger. Still this mind has uh, kind of jealousy. So we have to very honestly has to recognize all these different uh, tendencies available in our mind. So that is where Buddha mentioned this Lobo bhikkave na kaya na paha tabbo na vachaya panyaya diswa diswa paha tabba. Monks, this uh, lobe, whatever the uh, greed, cannot be overcome just by bodily, uh, say, behavior, not just by through the verbal behavior. But you have to recognize them through wisdom. Again and again, you have to recognize their appearance, and then you can let it go. So, they are now operating in the Panyasikha. So, while being in the Panyasikha, so, raw material are in a way the defilements. So, while we are dealing with some shallow concentration, so, concentration power is not there. So, therefore, possibility of arising defilements is possible, but we are able to notice them. We are able to recognize them because mindfulness is available. It is not, you are a beginner anymore. You are a, you are a, you have gone through a fair amount of process and without your knowledge, there can't be any obsessive thought in the mind. Did you get the point? I mean, without your knowledge, there can't be any obsessive thought. If there is any obsessive thought appearing in the mind, you should know that. So this is a property of a sotapanna. I mean, you don't need to over, I mean, underestimate the state. So, Buddha mentioned there are, uh, there are six, six reflections that one has to do, okay, uh, time to time, in order to recognize whether one is a real isotapanne. So, one aspect Buddha mentioned is, there can't be any obsessive thought, what Buddha mentioned is that pariyutthana uh, kilesa. There can't be any Pariyutthana Kilesa without his knowledge. So because he's pretty mindful and he is maintaining clarity of mind because of the concentration that he has gone through, all that previous Sunyata, Nimitta, whatever those states that he have associated. So his mind is very clean. So very moment that uh, defilement appears, so he has to be vigilant. Mindfulness should show it as an as a inherent quality. So, if he like that uh, defilement, he may grow it. Assume that there is a lustful thought and it is giving some kind of a enticing feeling, some sort of a joyful feeling. So, this person, I mean, uh, he is little, uh, say, still prone to lust. He still enjoy lustful thought. So, he encouraged that. Didn't bother to remove it quickly. So now, now still mind start to burn with lust. Is he know about it? He knows about it, yes. <laughs> Knowingly he allowed it, allowed lust to grow. The very moment he understood, yeah, it's not suitable for me, let, let, let it go now, I mean, should not support it. Now he start to practice, I mean, he, he is now uh, restraining himself. But the, I mean, the good approach is not that, that one. I mean, the very moment he understood, okay, now the uh, defilements are arising, lust is arising, rather than promoting, I should remove it. So that is the best approach. But even if he is uh, pamada, if he is uh, heed, heedful, or rather heedless, no, heedless, then he may even allow it to little grow because of the joy generated through lustful thought, but knowingly. And assume that he is getting angry. But he is promoting anger, maybe. Okay, he is he's wrong, I am correct. He is wrong, I am correct. So likewise he is promoting that. He now gets angry, knowingly. He know very well, I am burning now. So likewise, so lust is available, anger is available through a sotapanna even. So therefore, uh, so the third level, that is the panyasikha, requires a certain amount of uh, defilements we can say to continuation of the practice. 
So if you are maintaining very high concentration, then you may not get that raw material. So that's why I typically encourage not to d dwell too much in the concentrated states, rather just, just be face to face with defilements and uh, try to recognize defilements, be in the shallow level so that uh, you are able to understand the vulnerability of the mind, still the uh, weaknesses what we have, what are the operating tendencies available in our mind, so then we are in the ground then we are not overestimating ourselves, thinking that I am this, I am that, not, not putting a crown on your head, rather just in the ground, I am still have these different thoughts, these different lustful thoughts still coming in the mind, these different jealousy thoughts still coming in the mind, because we are very well aware of that, that you are a normal person, rather than, rather than a special person, it is much better than being a very special person. <laughs> yeah. Can I add <coughs> a little bit to the last question, Bhante? Right. A clarification. Now, Bhante always say, um, extend, try to extend your shunyata state, like, you know, as long as you can stay for in the uh, shunyata state. Mm -hmm. But now, again, Bhante said you have to be in surface level on yeah. your improved While progress. being in the surface level, try to exp extend. So when do you know which level? Now, we have been uh, learning to stay more, more at the Sunnata state, mm -hmm. but when do we know, now this is time for me to get out of it and be... No, I mean, that's the thing. There. Now, now there is, I mean, there may be a state that you don't feel that I have to get out of it. Now, get out of it indicate it's a kind of an artificial state, no? You are doing something in order to maintain it and now you are there. It's an artificial state. Now, uh, you are, now I feel now it is enough there. Now you better go get out of it. Now it's a kind of an artificial created state, right? So that created state is a sankata. So you are maintaining it. So what, what really have to... Uh, experience is something uncreated. It is already there. You have nothing to do in order to maintain it. So, I mean, that is the term Buddha mentioned na sasankara nigaihe varitavato. We are, uh, I mean, now suppose you are going to a deep concentration. So, that deep concentration, you are going to a lot of practice, say anapanasati, you are keeping your attention again and again, you are avoiding all the different. Uh, thoughts, distractions and very, very concentrated, you are closing your eyes, you are going to a very silent place. All these things are constructions. You are prep many preparations are there. With all these preparations, you are maintaining that. That is sasankara nigahi varito. So, so once, you, once you reach that particular concentration, you are maintaining that and you are avoiding all the defilements with the power of the concentration. It's an it's a artificial state. But now, <coughs> when, we are, when Buddha talks about the other state, na sasankara varitavato, that means, you don't need to do anything. It is there. It is, the in, it is the inherent quality of the mind. Now, that is why I mentioned in the early morning, say, when you have just pure water, is water doing something in order to maintain the water nature? Are you doing anything? Water doesn't need to do anything. Isn't it? <laughs> Actually, when, when we reach that uh, original state, it is there. You don't need to do anything. Where you need to do anything is when it gets defiled. Due to certain reason, it again go and grasp something. Now we lost that original nature, pure nature. Uh, or the, uh, say, the natural state of mind is lost. We can call it Buddha nature even. It is lost because again it gone and grasped. Now you need to remove the grasping. Once the grasping is not there, where it returns? Original nature. While being in the original nature, do you need to do anything? Nothing. So while in the original nature, now if you ask that question, when I need to go out of it? Not, not a valid question.
No, what I'm saying, Bhante, is like uh, now we are in defiled thoughts, and then you come to Shunyata uh, yeah, only true. when the defiled thoughts subsides. Yes. yes, true. So Shunyata is just a normal thing. So yes. But we are learning, because we all again go back to uh, defilements, so we are learning to be in that state. A state, So correct. that is what we are training ourselves to be. Correct. So Sunyata state itself appears constructed at the beginning because it is with some uh, concentration and it is a, a samadhi at that level. True. But later it becomes more natural. It becomes more ap- available. It has become, it's become more natural. It's a, it's a, it is a home, home of the mind. So then it is not forced, it's, it's natural, exactly. it becomes natural. Exactly. So then again, when you come to surface level means, again you turn to, um, rather you get thoughts again, while in this sonyata. No, that's the thing, now assume, if there is no, no reason to get thoughts, then how are you losing the sunyata? That is what now we practice Shunyata and we yeah. come to that stage. Uh. And then again, without, um, well, let me say, like, you know, thoughts coming, mm-hmm. right? Thoughts coming and thoughts goes. Mm-hmm. So it doesn't stay there. It, right. it comes and it's Go not, there. not correct. Because correct. you know that thoughts are coming. It's only our awareness. Yes, yes. Thoughts come and thought goes. Yes. So is this what you call the surface level? So that you yeah, don't yeah, try. Yeah, we can, we can call it. Yeah. yeah, you don't try to be in shunyata at that yeah. time. Yes. But you started with shunyata. Then mm-hmm. again, th- 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 thoughts started coming, but mm-hmm. they come, they go. Yes. You don't know. You don't yes. identify. So that is what you call surface level, and you encourage to be in that level. Yes. Okay. Encourage in the sense now, I mean, the te di tamatam bhavisati. Isn't it? I mean, so, I mean, you see, that's all. You hear, that's all. You sense, that's all. Thoughts come, then that's all, they go. The mind is undisturbed in a way. Mind, doesn't, mind didn't lose its uh, uh, silence in a way. I mean, uh, you can give a kind of, a, say, uh, simile. Now, say, if you see the sky, so, I mean, the, the original nature of the mind is very much like the sky. Clouds may come and they go. So similarly thoughts may come in the mind and they go, but the, the knowing part, the awareness part is intact. So actually we are returning back to that original awareness. So the mind has kind of an awareness, so that awareness field something is coming, foolishly we attach to that. And as a result of that, we lose this uh, natural awareness and we into a heightened state and we are in an excited state and we lose that very silent or uh, simple awareness. We are in an excited state. How about rather than when it is coming, yes, we know, okay, now it has come and we, we don't do anything. I mean, let it go. No, this awareness is undisturbed. So that is what we need to do. <laughs> so, but this, I mean, at the very early stages, this awareness you can't touch without coming through some practice. That is a problem. So you are doing this and that and all this uh, doing practice. Patipada is necessary even to touch this awareness. Once you are there, I mean, it becomes, I mean, then one can question, are you, what is this? This is nothing, no. Why I, why I was not able to come here. So, foolishness. So, actually we are away from our home. After coming back home, while being at home for a long time, then your mind will ask, why didn't I come here so long ago? I mean, (laughs) foolish. Ignorance. That's it. So that's why, I mean, some actually, Katakurunde Yananda Bhante used to say, I mean, we are struggling and doing this and that and, you know, many things are there. But ultimately, nothing is gained in a way. <laughs> you came back home. And there is, I mean, uh, I mean, 
So it's a very, I mean, natural thing. That's why Buddha mentioned Nibbuta Laddha Muda Nibbutim Bunjamana. Nikam Mahambin. Nikam Mahambin and you're not thin, and they would well have it. At the day, good ne. So actually, we are coming back to the kind of a, I mean, Buddha. So by the way, it has a huge depth, by the way. So that is why, I mean, all the different questions about a person, about a personality, or soul, many, many things are there that we, we confuse ourselves. Losing the original nature or the original awareness without believing it, without giving much emphasis to that original awareness. We are always deviating either to a concentrated state, either into a very ignorant state, mind-made state, artificial state. So though they are more, more appealing, more beautiful, more exciteful. This is nothing but like simple water. So we never appreciate it. So that could be the reason that Buddha mentioned that he didn't want to teach. Who will believe it? Isn't it? I mean, so we, we give marks to something special, no? We are not giving marks just to simple water. Isn't it? I mean, we, I mean now there are water bottles available. <laughs> Now, previously, people didn't uh, buy water bottles, no? I mean, no, there is no such market for water bottles. Now only water also ha- has become expensive. Previously, maybe Coca-Cola, Pepsi, or... Uh, <laughs> so those are expensive. Not water, water is freely available. People don't care about it. <laughs> Interesting. Can I have one question? Yeah, yeah. So, someone who has come to this stage, uh, as one to explain, like, you know, when you meditate, uh, when, not when meditating, but that the thinking about Dhamma, like, you know, that is Anupasana. Uh-huh. So, once you in this, one who, one who has come to this kind of stage should not go for Anupasana, like, you know. Uh, uh, actually, we need Anupasana when we lost this state. So, we are trying to be in this state. Again, as a result of asava anusaya, again mind go and grasp something. So, in order to release that grasping, you probably you need certain amount of anupasana. So, that amount also vary. So, at early stages, you need fair amount of anupasana. So, you need to again teach the mind. Don't do it. I mean, it is useless. You are being there. No, I mean, you are educating like a child. So, now that is where I say viraga anupasana, patnisaga anupasana. All these different uh, techniques are there. So you are, you are teaching the mind. It has again gone back to grasping. Now you are teaching the mind. Don't dwell there. Don't be there. Return back to that simple nature. Indriya Bhavana Sutta. And once you do that again and again, mind learns that. Mind understands the gravity or the burden while being in that grasping state. Then you don't need to even do that. You, you simply, mind goes again and grasping and you look at it. What are you doing? Returns. You are being, uh, what you, Buddha mentioned, you are being ashamed of that. That's all. Because it is very much like a child. Say you are teaching to a child, a child again and again. It is doing something bad. You are teaching, you are threatening, you are teaching, punishing. Now child doesn't do it. Suppose that, that is the situ- typical scenario at the beginning. Now, child also learning. He is not just staying at the same level. No, he is maturing. He is also learning. He is also understanding. Oh, this is good. This is bad. And he, as he mature, due to some reason, again he try to go to the wrong thing. Now, parent, notice it. Baba, what are you doing? I mean, just a just a indication. I mean, just a noticing. Then he may understand. Okay, yeah, not necessary to do. He may return back quickly. Now, now he is fairly educated and you don't need to go after him using a cane. So likewise Buddha mentioned, once the person reaches higher stages, he is ashamed of what mind is doing. He doesn't need to do much of anupasana. You can read uh, Indre Bhavana Sutta, how a seka is uh, developing, Indre Bhavana. So he, he is ashamed of what mind is doing. When mind go and sort of grasping, become excited. So Buddha didn't mention that he is doing 
all these uh, all are ikam sankatam paricca samuppannam dosa da anupassana asano buddha didn't mention that but what buddha mentioned is attiyati harayati jigucchati so he 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 mentioned now this person feel ashamed that still i mean i have educated this child all this long still this fellow is doing this no <laughs> kind of an shame shamefulness so that very shamefulness helps the mind to return back so it's a kind of progressive stage at early stages you have to struggle in a way do a lot to uh, help the mind to understand the mind later you don't need much just knowing it you just being mindful about it is enough then i mean people are telling that no i mean some people are telling okay bante certain defilements are coming and i simply watch it i am being mindful of it then it is gone i don't need to do much again i am back in the emptiness back in the clarity of mind so therefore in a in a way the the amount of work that we need to do become less and less feel like not enough no <laughs> need to do something more right <laughs> actually and, and this is something uh, <clears throat> that uh, we we sometimes even overemphasize this anicca uh, dukkhanath because again and again we think okay we need to promote it we need to understand it more and more more and more true not 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 really wrong but that if if you are again and again trying to i mean uh, do something realize something so that still i feel like uh, too much because if you are already in the unattached state just being there dwelling there is more fruitful for the gen- i mean for the development of the bojjanga than just struggling there so that is why different levels of bojjanga development buddha mentioned so that the if you refer anapana sati sutta each and every kaya anupassana vedana anupassana citta anupassana dhamma anupassana has one way of developing uh, bojjanga enlightenment factors so once you once you reach the other stage say now certain amount of bojjangas are developed and you are able to recognize the free state or temporary release state of mind and while being there buddha asked to develop bojjanga in a different manner සතිසම්බොජ්ජංගම් භාවයේ විවේක නිසිතං විරාග නිසිතං නිරෝධ නිසිතං ඔස් සංග පරිණාමින් සම්මවිචේ සම්බොජ්ජංගම් භාවයේ විවේක නිසිතං විරාග නිසිතං නිරෝධ නිසිතං ඔස් ඔස් සංග පරිණාමින් so likewise another method is mentioned entirely different method previously you are observing various phenomena looking at in this angle that angle lot of tasks are there in order to develop that level but when you reach there nothing much to do viveka nisitang so so my you are allowing the mind to rest viraga nisitang so whatever phenomena arising you have some viraga you are not bothered about it ganak ne you know i mean they are coming but you are not bothered you are not you are not going catching them and looking at in different angles and finding out arising and passing away not necessary so you have kind of a dispassionate attitude nirodha nisitam you are dwelling in nirodha you are dwelling in cessation nothing is there and vasag parinamin so mind is attuned to let go not to grasp but to let in go very much like nothing very much like doing less and less so very difficult to convince in a way to even to ourselves when we are more uh, effortful so we always think okay i need to do something i need to do something so that is why that is how we we are being uh, encouraged motivated to practice but uh, when you come to that level that motivation has to let go even that motivation has to let go are me there is a beautiful simile venerable anand mentioned so there is uh, one person uh, coming to the temple and uh, he asks what buddha is teaching so buddha mention uh, venerable ananda mention chandaraga chanda chand uh, chandaraga pahanaya bhagavata dhamman desi si there is a kind of a desire so buddha is mentioning to eradicate that desire so then then the other person 
refutes telling then it is impossible so you need uh, you need the desire to uh, enlighten then how are you going to teach that to remove that desire so not not matching your statement does not match then a very simple example uh, venerable ananda asked from that person when you want to come here at that time while at your home did you have a desire to come here what do you think say while at home did you have a desire to come to kalalgoda <laughs> so you had right so after coming to kalalgoda what has happened to that desire it's gone right i mean it is gone <laughs> so simple as that so after coming to this high if you want to come to kalalgod while being at kalalgod <laughs> not applicable so therefore sometimes it is i mean it's difficult to understand why 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 different ways that buddha explains it because we confuse ourselves we want this we want that we want to put that triangle this angle mathematics uh, science how many things are there just for a simple thing isn't it i mean nowadays we are more complicated our minds so that is why it is difficult for us but the good all people who are centuries ago maybe in the, in the king dutugamini and all these things they are very simple so they may attain before us we know too much <laughs> that is the problem we have too much knowledge too much dhamma sermons too many books difficult for us they have only single uh, monk he sim- simply preach some dhamma they listen to dhamma they practice they attain nibbana <laughs> that's the problem interesting actually we have reached 11:15 probably then we can wind up the session So this one no yeah okay uh, today breakfast dane was offered by iromi pereira and renuka rodrigo mr sunil cabral in view of his birthday today your birthday today <laughs> uh, sorry youngest birthday very good 7 years old <laughs> uh, then lunch dane by chamari late uh, felica am i correct uh, felica or something felicia okay felicia abe vardana to transfer merits so then actually we can wind up the session today uh, because of the power cut we uh, advance the q and a session so all these three days we are gathered here and try to develop uh, mindfulness concentration wisdom and we discuss some dhamma listen to dhamma sermons uh, practice to the best of our ability so all these merits we accumulated during all these days let's transfer or share with all the celestial beings all the past day relatives and whoever in need of these merits and let's wish ourselves also with the help of these merits to attain path fruition nibbana while keeping these good wishes in our mind let's recite the traditional verses etavata cha amhe hi sambatang punya sampadang sambe deva anumodantu sabba sampatti siddhiya etavata cha amhe hi sambatang punya sampadang sambe bhuta anumodantu sabba sampatti siddhiya etavata cha amhe hi sambatang punya sampadang sabbe satta anumodantu sabba sampatti siddhiya aaka satta cha bummatta deva naga mahindika punyantam anumoditva chirang rakhantu sasanam aaka satta cha bummatta deva naga mahindika punyantam anumoditva chirang rakhantu desanam ಆಕಾಸಾಚಬುಮ್ಮಠಾ ದೇವಾಗಾ 
idang vo nyati nang ho tu sukita hontu nyata yo idang vo nyati nang ho tu sukita hontu nyata yo idang vo nyati nang ho tu sukita hontu nyata yo imina punya kame ne mami bala samagamo satang samagamo ho tu yawa nibbana pattiya imina punya kamme na mame bala samagamo satang samagamo ho tu yawa nibbana pattiya imina punya kamme na mame bala samagamo satang samagamo ho tu yawa nibbana pattiya sadu 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 Sukhi hotu Sadhu sadhu anumodami Sadhu anumodi tabbang Kamami kami tabbang Sukhi hotu nibbana pachayo hotu Sukhi hotu nibbana pachayo hotu Sukhi hotu nibbana pachayo hotu अभिवादन सीलिस निचं वुद्धा पचायिनो चत्तारो धम्मा वर्धन्ति आयुवानो सुखं बलं आयुरारोग्य संपत्ति सग्ग संपत्ति मेवच अथोनिबान संपत्ति इमिनाते समिज्जतु Sukhi hotu nibbana pachayo hotu.